Good Sunday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick check of the forecast. This is a special edition of our usual broad net, broadcast, netcast, whatever you want to call this, again, from weather overtime, keeping you informed as to what's going to be coming your direction as we see some winter weather heading our way. Colder temperatures, lots in the way of, again, the potential for some brutally cold numbers as we go into the early portion of the this next week. This is going to be some of the coldest weather that we have seen across the Mid-South in this particular season, and we're not even into winter yet. We're still in autumn, so some powerful punches of cold air heading our way. The possibility of some, not a lot, but some frozen precipitation, and again, the potential for some Pretty cool conditions out there for a while. We'll take a look at that forecast here in a little bit. Got questions about what's going to be happening? Drop them into the comments section. We'll answer as many of them as we can. If you're looking for point-to-point -point forecast, again, what's it going to be like in my backyard in Covington? What's happening in Collierville? What's going on in Forest City? What's happening in Jonesboro? I'd love to answer everybody's question, but we would be on until probably next week taking care of that. So we're going to do some generalizations here to let you know a little bit more about what's going on. So stick around again for uh, more about that in just a little bit as we talk more about what's coming up with winter weather in the Mid-South area. Saying a big thank you to all the veterans out there. We're going to take a quick look at a couple of locations here and there both in the Mid-South and around the world. Mostly clear skies reported here in the Mid-South at Naval Support Activity Mid-South. A very big thank you to all the service men and women who cannot be off-duty again for Veterans Day this time around to be with their families. So thank you once again for serving. We'll have another location coming up here in just a little bit. The southerly winds are going to do a very good job of keeping the temperatures up, and that is going to be critical for what happens with the, protect the possibility of winter-type precipitation out there as we get into the rest of the forecast. Again, this will keep the numbers up so they won't get too cold tomorrow morning. So when the rain starts, it's just going to be rain and that's going to be it. Now, as we get into the colder weather, that's coming up later tomorrow. We'll show you where and when coming up here in just a little bit. Mainly for the morning hours, again, chilly, brisk. If you have anything going on, work related that you have to be out for in the morning. Rain chances begin right about sunrise not going to see much sunrise out there again with all the cloud cover. So for right now, that's going to be about as good as it gets for Veterans Day. More chances of rainfall across much of the area. This was about as typical as you could get for a autumn day at this time of the year in the Memphis area. Very close to normal on the high and the low temperature. Dry, nothing in the way of precipitation shaping up. So again, not seeing like too much uh, into and around the area where it comes to any more precipitation. And we've got plenty for the year, almost two feet extra of rainfall for 2019. So doing pretty good uh, in tune around the area. Welcome to everybody coming up here, uh, watching what's going on. Eddie Phillips, can we fast forward to the snow? No, we have some things to get through first, so sit back and relax. We'll talk about it coming up here uh, in just a little bit. In the meantime, we'll take a look around the Mid-South area and show you uh, what's going on. We can't just drop all the information at once or else I wouldn't have a show. So, you know, we'll take a look and see what goes on out there first and go from there. Tower Cam, again, showing the display on Big River Crossing, doing a good job. Clear for tonight and not seeing too much of anything in the way of visibility problems at I-40 and Witten Road. A little bit more cloud cover coming on through and not seeing again a lot of problems yet but as we go into the next couple of days that's where we're seeing the issue two systems heading our way number one we've got the colder air coming down from the north and then we've got moisture coming in from the west both of these are going to be intersecting over the mid-south area and that's going to determine again the precipitation we get and what we pick up and most importantly when all that happens. It's going to be a big concern at this point in time from what we're looking at. Now, right now, tonight, early into this evening, traveling someplace, forget the umbrella. There's nothing going on. Storm Tracker 3S radar showing little, if anything, into and around the area for right now. So not seeing anything to worry about for now. But tomorrow morning, again, that could be an issue. Way above freezing, comfortable even with temperatures in the mid to upper 50s. A few upper 40s showing up around the airport around Tunica. So again, a little brisk in parts of the area, but those southerly winds doing a good job of lifting the temperatures up for tonight. 
All right, let's run the numbers for overnight and show you what's going on. Again, the moving lines on screen, that's the winds. So suddenly winds coming up, doing a very good job of keeping those temperatures relatively stable. Now, tomorrow morning, early, we could drop into the upper 40s, lower 50s, somewhere in there. But that's about as far south on the temperatures, so to speak, as we go. And that's when the rainfall chances start moving in. Plans for outdoors for honoring our veterans tomorrow, probably indoors would be a better idea than outdoors because all of this is going to continue to make its way across the Mid-South throughout the rest of the day. Mid-morning, increasing chances of rainfall across the area and overspreading all of the Mid-South as we go into the afternoon hours. That's when the temperatures start to shift. Notice the winds here south over here but back this direction coming in from out of the north, that's when that front arrives in the area and starts to take the temperatures downwards into the rest of the day. So what are we looking for and when? The colder air overtakes that moisture. Fortunately, it's a very shallow pool of moisture, so there's not a lot to it. Last night, uh, one of the viewers on here compared to this, what, how does this stack up to, say, uh, the ice storm of 94? Kind of similar, but not quite. We've got the colder air, we've got the moisture. We just don't have as much cold air, and we don't have enough moisture for an ice storm. We'll talk about what we're expecting in just a little bit. Rain continues as we go again into Monday afternoon. The colder air arrives, starts dropping the temperatures, and north of the metro area through about sunset and dinner time, pink indicates where we see that changeover to rain, freezing rain, sleet, snow mixture. Looks like it's mainly going to be snow and uh, sleet possibilities. Freezing rain, again, a little bit too warm for that for right now. If we get anything whatsoever, it's going to be sleet and snow mixed in. That continues to drop on down to the south. North Mississippi, southeast Arkansas, you remain in the warmer rain area. And then back to the metro, that starts to make its way on through, through about 7 o'clock dinner time and afterwards. North of that, that's where the snow starts to head on through. Dyersburg, Jonesboro, the Boot Hill, southern Missouri, northeast Arkansas, you'll start to see more potential for snow mixed with sleet. But... Here's the thing, we're not looking at a lot at this point in time. You can uh, forget about rushing out to the hardware store to pick up that snow shovel and the snowman building contest the kids are hoping for. Not going to be happening this time around. Drier air coming through, eroding the moisture on the back side, and also some very dense air. So all this is going to come through like a bowling ball and get rid of all this moisture very quickly. So through about early Tuesday morning, that's it, and that's all. We're going to have a brief period of precipitation. Some accumulations, not a lot, but again, some could be possible into and around Tuesday morning as we look for the potential out there to continue for anything involving rain and snowfall across portions of the area for right now. Now, sleet pellets, again, frozen, tiny little balls of ice. That, again, could be a possibility, and they're starting to show up a little bit on here, but again, one one-hundredth of an inch, that's not a lot. That is a very tiny amount this is where we could see some problems early Tuesday morning with the temperatures below freezing, maybe again the bridges and overpasses, any exposed roadways that's not insulated by the ground somehow. We might see a few slick spots there. That's going to be the main concern and that's going to be Tuesday morning, not tomorrow morning. What about snow? A little bit more potential for that, but not great potential, as you'll see going on through here. Again, the best possibility looks like it's going to be going through west central Tennessee, maybe around northeastern Arkansas, just north of the metro area, and we're not talking about that much. Again, the ground right now is really, really warm, so doubtful it's going to be sticking on uh, anything in the way of roadways that are, again, on the ground surface, anything that's suspended in the air, bridges and overpasses, that's where we could see the problems. Best possibility of that snowfall for right now is going to be north of the metro area, Covington, Ripley, back over north of Jackson, Humboldt, back to around Gibson County in Tennessee, and just along and north of I-40. This is just one computer model right here. Again, they, some of the computer models go a little bit more conservative. Some allow for a little bit more interpretation of the data by just a little bit so we can see the potential out there. You see that a lot with the spaghetti models when we do the tropical weather forecasting. This particular model right now, again, not really showing a lot of major concern for heavy amounts. This actually is one of the more 
quote unquote liberal models that again show a little bit more leeway with what goes on. So the potential of anything going on, the heaviest potential appears to be less than an inch in numerous locations for West Tennessee and northeastern Arkansas. Down to the south, into and around portions of say northern Mississippi, again for snowfall amounts, there's going to be some trace amounts out there. Not expecting to see that much for say Tunica, Clarksdale, into around the area of Helena, West Helena, Batesville. You might see some flakes mixed in with the snow, but you're not going to be getting too much in the way of accumulation, if anything whatsoever there. So the best possibility of picking anything up is going to be in this stripe taking place right around portions of, again, West Tennessee, mainly from the metro area back up from the Mississippi River eastward into Middle Tennessee. So that's about as good as it gets for right now. And again, the computer models at this point in time leaning again a little bit more permissive with the numbers. This is going to be about as much as we get for now. Could this change between now and early Tuesday morning, late Tuesday night? Absolutely. If you've never done winter weather forecasting, I wholeheartedly urge you to give it a shot because it's one of the most humbling experiences you have ever had. So many variables in play at this point in time. Air thickness, temperature, the amount of moisture out there, the direction of the storm, the thickness of the cold air. Tons of variables like this can make different things to happen. So again, is this going to say that Covington's going to wind up with seven-tenths of an inch, that's it and that's all? Absolutely not. It doesn't work that way. Does this mean that we were wrong when we said, oh, well, he said this and it didn't happen in my backyard, so therefore it didn't happen? That's not the way forecasting works. And again, if you haven't tried winter weather forecasting, now would be a good time to give it a go to see how you do on it because it is a bit of a challenge. So again, this is what we're looking at for right now could change and the next model updates Todd Demers will have more on that coming up bright and early tomorrow morning so stay tuned for more on that for tonight and into tomorrow temperatures again will be starting off in the lower 50s and that blue arrow right there showing the temperatures dropping throughout the rest of the day by the time we hit afternoon and evening rain changing over to a snow sleet mixture and then that will continue through about news channel 3 at 10 but again minor accumulations possible by the time we hit tuesday it's going to be frigid out there high temperatures back in the lower 30s and that's it so brutally cold not only for tuesday at the bus stop for the kids but take a look at some of those low temperatures coming up as we go into wednesday morning teens across the area winds are going to be breezy out there so we could be talking about some near zero wind chills in parts of the mid-south as we go into the course of the next couple of days so definitely want to be prepared for that we'll keep you updated again on the changes taking place as we go throughout the next couple of days we recoup the temperatures going upwards into the 50s as we go to about the area uh, into and around the weekend that's still below normal, but at least it's not, again, the air-conditioned deep freeze that we have coming up for us in the next couple of days. And the next chance of rainfall, uh, we've gotten plenty for the year. Thank you very much. Next best chance of anything coming down is going to be next Wednesday. There is a possibility by the end of next weekend we could see some more clouds with a weak system coming through. Confidence is not high regarding anything involving rainfall here. So some cloud cover, yes, rainfall chances, just not for right now. But keep it tuned. We'll keep you updated on that. So maybe some showers coming up as we go toward next Wednesday. And things, again, keeping calm and dry otherwise. And finally crawling our way back into the 50s as we head into next weekend or so. So that, again, is going to be uh, the possibility of seeing, again, the heaviest amount of rain mixed with snow, changing back to some much-needed sunshine and getting some drier conditions in the Mid-South as we head out of this next week. Good news in the tropics. The latest cold front has now made its way all the way out into the Atlantic, all the way down to the Bahamas and into and around Cuba. That's that leading edge of the cold air that made its way into the Mid-South the last time around from that last cold front last week. So very stable conditions in the Caribbean, the Gulf, and the Western Atlantic. Very good news that as we approach the end of hurricane season, there's not that much going on, and hopefully it stays that way because it's been a busy season as it is. So for the next two to five days, National Hurricane Center not showing anything in the way of development up there. Good news, again, for air quality in the Mid-South. These cold fronts coming through and sweeping the air clean are going to keep the pollutants level 
very low, so green or good air quality with little or no threat expected on that. No problems at all there. We were hoping to see uh, from, from the Mid-South and around the midsection of the country, the transit of Mercury. The planet Mercury will be going between the Earth and the Sun, and it's going to take about five hours for a small black dot to cross the Sun's surface tomorrow. Several Mid-South groups were getting set up to see this. Unfortunately, again, the possibility of seeing this is from the Mid-South is going to be difficult at best as the chances of rain and the cloud cover moves on through. So doubtful we're going to be able to see it. Now the good news is there will be plenty of opportunities online, and we'll keep those coming to you again on News Channel 3 social media. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3 online. And we'll keep you updated on that. All right, one more look at the forecast before we wrap things up. I'm going to get things reset so I can go live on my Facebook page and on Twitter and Periscope coming up here pretty soon at this point in time. Temperatures again back in the upper 40s to lower 50s. This is what we're looking at for early tomorrow for, again, Veterans Day on Monday. Mid to upper 40s to lower 50s. Rain chances begin around daybreak and continue right on in through the forecast as we head into around the rest of the day. So get prepared for a soggy Veterans Day across much of the Mid-South and not looking too good again for outdoor activities uh, into and around the area for right now. Taking a look uh, right before sunrise into Iraq, we've got temperatures at about 19 past 5 Iraq time uh, in the northwest Persian Gulf. Temperatures in the 40s up around Mosul, 53 in Baghdad with partly cloudy skies. Clear in Basra, 59 degrees and 56 with a few clouds around the Najaf area. And again, keeping track of weather all around the world. Uh, again, trying to bring a little bit of the Mid-South area to you. If you've got friends or loved ones uh, serving in the United States military, trying to help again on Veterans Day to, again, for the people who cannot come home, watching what goes on overseas. And a big thank you to everybody for wearing the uniform of our country, including my own dad, 24 years in the Kansas Army National Guard and a free trip to South Vietnam back in 1969. And again, glad he made it home safely, but a lot of other people haven't. And again, thank you to everybody who's got friends or loved ones who wear the uniform of our country. 30s and 40s in Afghanistan right at about sunrise and temperatures in the 30s and 40s with clear skies back toward Faizabad. A little bit of cloud cover around Kandahar, 47 degrees 30 back around Kabul at the airport for right now. And we'll feature more of those coming up tonight. Again, we'll have more coming up on my Facebook page, Twitter and Periscope at about a quarter till nine. So tune in for an update there. Todd Demers is going to have a ton of stuff to talk about for tomorrow morning. Corey Ventura will have a lot to talk about with rain in the area as unfortunately some more slipping and sliding could be going on and maybe some slick spots on Tuesday morning. So please keep that in mind if you're traveling for Veterans Day activities or going back to work or school brutally cold as we get into the early portions of Tuesday morning. So again, that's something that's going to be paramount out there to keep track of where it comes to the weather. Something on here you'd like to see, more satellite, more climate data, whatever, Get drop me a line, austin.onic at wreg.com. Don't forget you can pick up all the forecast updates and more information about our approaching winter weather. Check out our 7 to 10 day forecast again. That's at wreg.com slash weather. I'll have more details on the forecast coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Stay tuned for more on that. And, of course, more with Todd Demers bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. You've been watching Weather Overtime. Thank you to our veterans for everybody for serving. And stay tuned to News Channel 3 for updates on our latest winter weather scenario. Thanks for joining us tonight.